Hey fourth graders, welcome to our reading lesson. We are on unit six, week four this week, and our concept is money matters, and our essential question is what has been the role of money over time? So if you have a dollar bill, that dollar can dollar dollar that dollar can be exchanged for change and or a number of things. So it says that centuries ago people had to barter or trade for the good and services that they wanted. So maybe they didn't have a dollar. Maybe they had um, a goat and that goat provided milk. And um, you, that goat that provided milk um, was being traded for cloth because somebody needs to make some clothes. So people would make a trade. They'd say, oh, I need some cloth and I'll trade you my goat for cloth. Okay, money necessarily wasn't always involved. It could have been bartering or trading. They just decided, okay, this is what I need. You have something I need. I have something that you need. Let's make a trade. Let's barter for it. Okay, or, oh, I've got um, two pounds of grain and you have seven fish. Is that equal? Is it not equal? Can I give you a little bit less or some more? Bartering and trading. Okay, so this week we were talking about how money or what role has money had over time. Um, if we're talking about, um, money that matters, normally the, well, money has kind of been a, a, an important thing in history. And so we're going to be talking about, once again, what kind of genre? Narrative nonfiction? No. Um, what else did we talk about? We talked about a couple different ones, but this week is once again, the same thing we've been talking about, expository text. Okay, I know it kind of gets redundant and boring talking about those things, but it is factual information. It is going to be in um, expository text form. It's going to be kind of an article form where we have facts and information given about that topic. There might be um, text features like a sidebar or headings. You might have some subheadings, some pictures, um, some captions, and maybe they're going to be those bold highlighted words that might actually have a glossary attached to it. So a couple different things, um, the, a lot of these things we've talked about over and over again, so they should be kind of starting to click when we say expository text, you know what we're talking about. Um, when we have headings, they're going to be um, kind of telling you exactly what that main section is going to be talking about. So in your book, the story we're reading today um, is called The Big Picture of Economics. And just looking at that page, the very first heading we have is money matters so you know we're going to talking about what money is going to have to do and why it matters on the next page you might see you can learn about a lot about economics at a restaurant so i'm assuming you're going to be talking a lot about money inside of a restaurant okay um i can see right now there's already going to be pictures with captions um there's headings there are um also some bold-faced words that are going to be also inside of your story. And because we're talking about expository text and facts and information that are given to you, we are going to be, again, talking about main idea and key details. Really picking out that main idea of a text and listing the details that got you to that main idea. Main idea. So a heading obviously is going to tell you what you're going to be roughly reading about. But let's figure out exactly main idea what are we talking about. By doing that, you're going to be able to list three details, or in order to find your main idea, you can list three details and be like, okay, what are these three details saying? Let's go back. Let's really say, okay, this is my main idea. Um, while you're reading this, you can stop and ask yourself some questions and really kind of understand, okay, what is, what is economics? I don't know. We'll keep reading. You're probably going to find the answer in your story. Mrs. Crilly has said multiple times, when you have a question and you're reading something, where is the answer most likely, most likely going to be? Right there on the page in the story. Okay? Sometimes there are things that you do have to look up, like uh, maybe definitions to words, things like that. Those things you can go look up. But most of the time, your answers are going to be in your story. So we are talking expository text, main idea and key detail. We have proverbs and adages again and then vocabulary. So you're going to need your big picture of economics, main idea, and key detail. It's going to list on different pages to find the main idea. So if, even if you look at page 523, that first page that you're going to look at, it's going to say, oh, I'm right there. We're talking about learning about economics in a restaurant. I know that my main idea is going to have something to do with a restaurant. Read that. Go back. 
tell yourself, okay, what is the main idea on this page? Um, is there something that people are maybe going to be able to do? And, and then how did you know? How did you figure that out? Did they list things? Did they tell you ideas? List those details to get to your main idea. Okay, they didn't give you a whole lot of room, so you know right there the main idea is not gonna be longer than a sentence long. So it shouldn't be too hard. Then you're gonna do that for page 525 and then 528. Now on your backside, you have proverbs and adages again. So I'm just gonna go back over those proverbs and adages again. So proverbs and adages are short sayings that have been used for a long time, and they usually express the general truth or observation. Every culture uses them. So we're gonna look for context clues to figure those out. They give you one, and it says, the worth of a thing is what it will bring. Okay, so that's your proverb, that's your adage on page 226. Go look for your context clues to figure out what that means. Remember, it's a general saying, that has been used for a long time that not only tells you the truth, or it's an observation. So what does this one say when it says, the worth of a thing is what it will bring? Okay, what's the worth of that thing? The genre, we're talking about expository text. How do you know this is an expository text? Well, go to the beginning of this video and figure it out. And then, how does economics affect everyday choices? Economics is money. How does money affect everyday choices? It's gonna be a pretty easy answer to figure out once you read your story. Then you're gonna choose three of those highlighted words from the text and complete the chart below. You guys are rocking your reading stuff. I am really impressed with what you guys are doing. And I know we've been doing these for quite a long time, so it's not extremely hard, but it's good to get that repetition of main idea, key detail, summarizing, asking and answering questions, getting those vocabulary words down, um, context clues, all these things that we were doing over and over again. It's gonna be great for just repetition to under understand those things, okay? So we're going to quick go through our vocabulary words. I like to keep reading short and sweet because I know it's not always fun for everybody, but it's a necessary skill. So our vocabulary words, the first word we have is entrepreneur. So an entrepreneur is a person who starts or runs a business. Sarah is an entrepreneur who started her own dog walking business. So if you became an entrepreneur, what business would you start? So if you start like a lemonade stand, you're an entrepreneur. You started that business. So you just have to keep it going. Um, we have a student, a couple of students at school that have their own business. I, I just think of maybe the Schaefer family and their, their worms. Okay. So they started their own business. They would be entrepreneurs. <clears throat> Our next word is invest. Um, to invest is to use money to buy something. It's going to make more money in the future. So Victoria wants to invest more of her allowance into a small stamp collection. Okay, stamp collections in the future could cost or could give her money. So what is another thing that you might invest in? Um, I know this is kind of over your heads, but there's a thing called the stock market. People invest in the stock market. And the stock market is going to be things like um, craft, where you're going to buy some stock and craft. Nothing, craft macaroni and cheese. You buy that all the time. Craft makes ketchup and mustard and relish. That company, if you invest in it and they keep making great things like that, then you make money. Okay, that's investing. But you can also invest in um, spending your money um, to make more money. You may buy a home in the future. Okay, if you buy a home, put some money into it, sell it, you make some money. Next word is marketplace. A marketplace is a place where food and other products are bought and sold. So Lauren and her mother visited the marketplace to buy fresh vegetables. What else can people buy at a marketplace? Next word is merchandise. Merchandise is the goods that are for sale. Clothing in a shop is merchandise that might have skirts, dresses, tops, all sorts of things. Pants. What kind of merchandise are sold in an electronic store? iPads, phones, computers. That's all merchandise. Next one is transaction. A transaction is the act of carrying out a business exchange. So the man gave his credit card as part of a transaction to pay for his breakfast. What can be used as money for a transaction? Debit cards, checks, uh, credit cards, all that. Now we have Apple Pay, where you pay just with your phone or your watch. Currency. Currency is money used in a country. I exchanged American dollars for foreign currency at the bank. What currency does the U.S., or not the U.S., the United States use? We use dollar bills. Um, down in Mexico, they use pesos. 
Okay, um, over in Europe, they use euros. That's their form of currency. Economics is the next word. Economics is a science that studies the way people are, use resources to produce goods and services. Bartering is a system of economics where people trade for one thing or the other. What are the, uh, what are the economics of a lemonade stand? Okay, think about that. And last word for this week is global. Something that is global has to do with the world. Um, the internet is a global electronic network that connects people around the world. Why is local the opposite of global? If it's local, it's only around the area. But if it's global, it's around the whole world. Okay, I can call someone from Australia but they don't get the same news channel as us because our news channels are local, but I can call them because it's global. Okay. So go ahead, read your story, listen to your story. If you want, I'm going to post that video on separate and fill out your paper and good luck. See you later.